Hello everybody, this is Marjorie. <laughs> Look at me today, a little of the Chelsea Flower Show. <laughs> oh, the beautiful colours, it's lovely, isn't it? She and link down below, by the way. Now, I was going to tell you the day about my, my neighbours, Connie and Neville, right? Well, Connie says to me the other day, could you drive us down a motherboard? Because Neville and I have won a competition and it's an escape room, escape room experience in Motherwell. And we didn't ken what it is. Would you mind driving? Because, well, we can you do any mind driving. I says, I don't mind driving at all, Connie. I'll drive you down to Motherwell to the escape room. Why are you want to go to Motherwell to escape an escape room? I mean, the spoken Motherwell trying just to escape Motherwell. Never mind getting an escape room within Motherwell. I mean, uh, I mean uh, it's like the crystal maze, honest to God, folk trying to fund their way out to Motherwell, get up through Wishy, maybe. You know, get as far as Overton and then they get turned back and say, back to Motherwell. Back, know your place. Anyway, well, this all came about because Connie won a competition. Connie won a competition in the People's Friends, right? <laughs> and I says, what were, you, what were you doing in an escape room? And she says, well, they lock you in, right? You, they lock you in and you've got either an hour, you've got 90 minutes and you get wee puzzles and wee games and you have to try and work it out so you can get out of the room. I says, what happens if you didn't get out of the room? Is, is it like is it like Squid Game on the, on the Netflix? Did somebody just open the door and shoot you? Yeah. And she says, no, I don't know what happens if you can't get out. I don't know if you if you can't get out, maybe you just stay there. And I says, oh, I hope they feed you. I hope they give you a wee glass of water. You'll pass out. Don't let prisoner cell block <laughs> prisoner cell blockage. So I was thinking, what well, I would quite like an escape room because you got a wee bit of peace when you there'd be no emails, there'd be no Zoom, there'd be no phone calls, there'd be no Egypts for next door chatting the door and just wondering in. I says I would take a wee bit a uh, Victoria sponge and a flask of tea, I'd be as happy as Larry. Oh my god. <laughs> I'd be as happy as a poodle with a bowl of prawn crackers, so I would. So, into the motor, right? Neville's in the front, Connie's in the back. Doing a mother ball. Now, Connie's one of these back backseat drivers, right? She's got, you know, you think you're doing your driving test. She's like, mind the pedestrians. Oh, there's a tractor coming. Oh, mind the town hall on the right-hand side. I'm like, it's all right, Connie. I wasn't planning on going through the double doors of the town hall and mowing all the folk down and <laughs> try to hit the mayor. So, we're in the motor, right? And um, we, we Neville. <laughs> we Neville gibbering away. Now, I've told you before, he's that gullible. You could tell him anything. And we Neville says, Oh, I've not been to Motherwell before, Marjorie. This is my first time to Motherwell. I don't know where he's from. I think he's from up the Highlands somewhere. Anyway, I says, oh, the last time I was in Motherwell, Neville, I saw a wee row of monkeys. There was a wee row of monkeys doing a sponsored conga, doing Brandon Parade. They were doing it for charity. They were they were trying to make money for, um, what do you call it, the uni chef, right? So they were, they were doing monkeys. They were doing monkeys doing Brandon Parade. And he says, oh, that was lovely. But they dressed up. Did they have wee costumes? I says, aye. They had wee velvet waistcoats and they had wee woolly hats, right, with matching pom-poms. They had wee pom-poms to match the pom-poms on their jackets. And they had wee kind of gold lamy, like wee pantaloons. And they had wee Aladdin shoes. Oh, it was awfully entertaining. I was I was clam like a sailor. I thought, oh, that's that's wonderful. That's not something you, you think you're going to see in Motherwell, is it? You, you're going about your business and here's a row of monkeys doing a conga doing the shopping centre. So that was lovely. And then you've got Connie. Mind, mind the wee girl on the, on the left-hand side. She's just coming out of that house. I says, I, I'm no I'm no planning to go up onto the pavement, Connie. She says, I think it's straight on. I says, I think you'll find it's the right turn here. For somebody who didn't ken where it was, you, you seem to have an awfully good idea of what way I have to go. And I had my son Navo on as well. And every time she spoke, she spoke to the wee man. The wee man saying, at the next turning, turn left. Go through the roundabout and stay in the left lane. And she's yapping away, going, I think I think it's during the slip road. I went, There isn't a slip road, hen. That that's somebody's drive into their house. Oh so ne Neville, right, he says, Oh, th thanks very much for doing this, Marjorie, because I don't know what it is. I don't know what I am not doing his accent. I don't know what it is, Marjorie. Oh, where was I there? I was going to Bombay. <laughs> I better not do the accent. I don't want to offend anybody. You know me, you know me. Very people I'm a people well, I'm a people person. I'm gonna get out there and say all oh, the people. So we're on our way, right? And he says, Thanks again, Marjorie, because when I'm on a bus, I get a bit of, a bit of bus sickness. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just the size of the amount of folk and I get nervous, but no, I'm no good in buses. I says, Neville, not a problem, son. I says, 
I, I quite liked the bus. <laughs> and I was telling them, right, this one time, I went in a Buchanan bus station, right, and I was getting a bus to Largs because, well, I've told you before about my pal Maureen, right? Maureen lives in Largs. Oh, she's an awful good baker. Well, she was telling me this this day, right? She was saying, I've made meringues and I've made crispy cake and I've made this and I've made that and I've oh, made chocolate tiff and one of my favourites. And I says, in the name of God, Maureen, I hope you're getting all this baking away because, I mean... <laughs> yeah, if you eat all this, if you consume all this sugar, you're you're gonna end up like a what would you call it, the the diphtheria? You're gonna end up having to inject yourself, you know, with with a an insulate. So I says to I says to Neville, I go on this bus right, I've gone to Lars to see Maureen, and I go on the bus, and there was only one seat left, and it was right at the back of the bus. And you know how sometimes there's two double seats facing the other way, like facing backwards, and I says, oh no, so I says to this woman, would you mind swapping with me, hen, because I'm no, I'm no that great in a bus, and she wouldn't swap, I says, miserable cow, so I went down to the driver, and I says, excuse me, they'll no move, and I'm a bad, I'm a bad, you know, cons consumer on a bus, would you mind going in reverse, so that I can go forward, and he says, oh, no problem at all, I think I went to school with the man. I think he recognised me. I wasn't very sure about his face. It did look a wee bit familiar. Maybe he worked in the butchers. I don't know. Anyway, reverse all the way to Lars for the Buchanan bus station. <laughs> oh, that was awfully funny. I mean, it did take us three days. We did need to stop quite a few times for toilet breaks and, you know, to get meals and stuff. But see, by the end of it, oh my God, everybody on that bus, well, we're all the best of pals. Oh, everybody, all the best of pals. I mean, it just goes to show, doesn't it? Every ceiling has a cloudy lid. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> <laughs>